Hey there, I'm Jessica Sterling. I'm a portrait and event photographer based here in Los Angeles. Uh, and I thought today we should talk about interpreting your images. It's as much knowledge of Photoshop and Lightroom as it is having an imagination and understanding your tools. Kind of dreaming up what it is that you want to see and then making it happen. Oftentimes when I take a picture, I know kind of what it is that I'm going for and exactly what I want to do. But sometimes it's a process where you're kind of feeling your way through it and finding in, in hindsight, when you're looking at the images on your screen, finding which way the image takes you. You maybe sometimes you, know, you see an image and you go, wow, I didn't expect it, but that shot is the shot. Uh, that's that's the, the best one, and that's this one really deserves to be black and white, or this one really deserves to have a special treatment of it, or this is the most impactful shot, and I want to make sure that um, I, I tweak it and tailor it so that way it really shines. So that's what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about today, um, and uh, here we go. Uh, this is the lovely Ms. Laura Libby. She's a soprano, and um, as you can see, this is a lovely shot of her. Um, kind of dramatic, but how can you make it even more like, wow! Of course, there's all these filters and things like this on the left side of your screen in Lightroom, but um, I look at it and the first thing I think is, I would like it to look more like a superhero movie poster, possibly. So what I would do is I'd go over to the basic section here and I would bring the shadows up a little bit to get a bit more detail. This is oftentimes how I add contrast to pictures. Uh, and then I bring the blacks down. Uh, and then um, I feel like all this stuff here is a bit distracting, so I might go down into effects and bring in a vignette. Let's see, la la la, like that. Um, I feel like the colors are maybe a bit, um, I don't know, they're not quite right to me. So I may go to split toning, which is adds a color layer sort of. Um, to your picture. So I'll just turn up the saturation so you can see what it's doing. But I think I want to add like a bluish kind of, maybe green, you know, probably a bit more purpley blue. Yeah, cooler undertone and bring the saturation back down again. A little bit. So you can see what that's doing. See, it's just sort of cooling it off a little. Um, I think I'm gonna bring the shadows up a little bit See what it's doing there? I'm gonna bring the shadows up even more. Uh, I still wanna have, I want this part of her body to have more oomph to it, you know? Like, just, I want it to look like that, but the, the rest of the picture I want it to be darker. So I guess I'll go back over to effects and bring the vignette down a little bit. You can change the shape of it by changing the roundness um, to make it more oblong. Uh, so that's looking kind of interesting to me. I, I want her red lips to really stand out, so I may go over to, and it's all about imagination, right? So like, you know, you, I want her lips to be completely more goth or more red. Um, just isolating the saturation on the red color here. Um, let's see what else. I just, I feel like this part with her hip and stuff, it's cool, but it's maybe a little bit too much and her hand is a little distracting, so I may bring in um, right here on the right is the gradients tool. Sorry if I'm going a little too speedy. I'm just thinking thinking out loud here. Um, just to bring that down, you can, you know, do whatever you want, right? But for me, I'd like it to be more like that. And then you can change the angle of it just by clicking and dragging like that. It's kind of groovy. Um, this is still up here on the photo right side is a little distracting, so again, I'm gonna probably bring that vignette down. You can tell I like vignettes sometimes. And it's starting to look a little harsh here where you can see the vignette, so I might um, change the feather of it, make it softer, possibly. Uh, uh, let's see what else. These things, this was a four by eight uh, foam core, black foam core behind her, and it has a dent in it, so I'm just gonna take the retouching tool right here and uh, just kind of, and then increase my brush size just by sliding up on my mouse. Do that, click again, and it's just, I think they call this spot retouching. In any case, so I'm just kind of cleaning this up a little bit. I mean, obviously this isn't real retouching where you're doing that, but it's all right for like the web. 
um, that's how I look at it, because it's not going to be viewed much bigger than as you see it right here. All right, so let's see. That's kind of interesting. Um, now I think I want to bring up a little bit more detail in the shadows in her face. So I'm going to click on this, which is like a brush item. So I slide up and down with my finger on the mouse because I have a Mac. Um, and I'm going to bring this exposure up here. And I'm just going to paint it in. Paint it in. So it's, you know, when I'm looking at an image, I try to decide where do I want the focus to be. Um, you know, I'd like it to be on her eye, on her elbow, and then maybe a little bit on her hip so that the line travels like that. Uh, you know, kind of toning down this arm a little bit. This arm actually and this hand are a little dominant too, so I might click that and then unclick it, make this a little bigger, and then bring the exposure down on her hand. Sometimes that makes the shadows look kind of too much. But a little bit. Um, let's see, that's kind of nice. You know, I might also bring in some definition here on her cheekbone by bringing in a shadow. It's kind of groovy, right? And right here. I mean, it says, this is where, to me where the real, a lot of artistry comes in in photography is sort of in the, uh, it's like the last bit. It's not exactly retouching, it's like interpreting a print in the darkroom. Uh, let's see here. So that's kind of, Kind of cool, huh? And pretty quick. Um, but to me, it's not necessarily about speed. It's about, you know, representing your artistic vision. This black line here, you know, I think that's where the tape is. That's sort of annoying to me. So I'm going to bring in another gradient over here. And just sort of gradient it out into blackness. Cool. All right. So here's another shot. Okay. This shot is lovely. It's beautiful. It's you know, um, nice and sharp too. <laughs> uh, so if you press V, it makes a black and white. And that's lovely black and white. I personally would prefer it to be a bit more dramatic. You know, not super 90s looking, but you know, maybe. So what I did is I moved up the exposure, brought up the shadows, very similar to what I did in the color thing. I guess I have a certain look that I like. May bring the. Uh, you know, I think if you bring the highlights down, it doesn't look so nice on the skin. Uh, to me, that's kind of pretty. I don't want it to look too cheery. I guess a little bit more moody is what I'm going for. So I brought up the, the shadows and um, brought down the highlights a little bit. And I'm just kind of messing with these tools here until like I get something that I like. Um, I guess I just want it to be sort of, sort of moody. Um, I feel like I don't want this area to show up again, or this area here. And you know, it's the same as in drawing, where you kind of work around the image and don't pay too much attention to one particular thing. Um, if I wanted to, uh, I could come in here and sort of paint this. I'm gonna make this. Uh, I'm just doing a brush thing here. I'll change the clarity on that to sort of smooth that out possibly because now that I brought in all these shadows it's sort of oops, control Z command Z to undo that uh, so I'm just kind of smoothing that out uh, in clarity I don't know if that's a good thing to do or not uh, if I was going to take this picture into Photoshop I probably would just retouch it um, but as you can see what the clarity is doing. You know, that's a great thing to do is just move the sliders around so you can see what's happening. So I'm moving my finger on the mouse, make it bigger and larger, smaller and larger. Just claritying, blurring this slightly out. I want the focus to be on her lips and her eyes and not anything else. Let's see what else. You know what might be kind of fun is if I add another split tone thing to this, maybe warmer. You know, I'll bump up the saturation so we can see. I'm thinking orange. Kind of old worldy looking, I guess. Bring it down a little. Like that. And that's the, how it works, in case you don't know, is the shadows is for the darker parts and then the highlights. So you can make your highlights kind of you know, get up to purple here, like that if you wanted, which is kind of groovy. Look. I don't think I want that, but personally. Uh, let's see what else. 
So this is what I do for my clients. If there's a particular shot that really stands out that I want them to notice that it stands out, you know, to me this is this is a great shot. I put in a little extra time uh, in in the proofs even, and I never deliver anything that hasn't had some adjustments to it. Okay, let's see what else would I like to see on this. I kind of like it. Um, I may, right here, um, I'd like that shadow to be a little bit more defined. Whoops, get rid of that gradient I just accidentally put there. So I'm gonna click this um, brush tool here. Make my brush a little smaller, exposure down. You can change here the flow of it. So you can make it not so dark. Like that. Just an idea. Maybe like that. You know, you think about it, it's like this is. Can I add more shadow here? Why not? It's like the final interpretation of the image. Adding more shadow here, possibly. Do I want that? I'm going to undo that last brush stroke. Um, and now that I'm looking at it, I feel like I'd like the shoulder to stand out, but not this part of the neck necessarily. So. And. Obviously, too, things that are light in a dark background really stand out, or things that are dark in a light background really stand out. But the things that I want to stand out the most, I usually make lighter, and things that I'd like to kind of fade away in the background, I make darker. So I'd like the eye to go from, you know, from her forehead to her eye to her cheek to here the shoulder. So I actually might bring up this forehead a little bit. Open up the brush tool again, bring up my exposure. You can see I have a couple of different brush tools going on here. Oh, I am the flow really low, so. Oops. Oops. Kiss the nose, kiss here, kiss here. Possibly, maybe that's too much, but it's kind of interesting. And I think it adds more mood to the picture. So, I mean, if you. If I press reset, you'll see where we started. And then I undo that, go back. It's quite a bit more dramatic. I hope that was helpful. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe. Any comments that you have or questions, um, just write them below. Be sure to get out there and capture your own images of life.